star out of me. He'll make a film about a man who's sad and lonely. And all I gotta do is act naturally. Well, I'll bet you I'm gonna be a big star. Might win an Oscar, you can never tell. The movie's gonna make me a big star. Hi, welcome to Meet Me at the Movies on C19 TV. And if you're listening to the podcast version of that, and you found that through WGWG.org, however you choose to spend time with us, I do appreciate it. I am Noel T. Manning II, hanging out with a, a couple of new friends. One I've, I've known for a little while, and another I'm hoping we're going to be some good friends down the road. We have Reed Lackey, Nathan Rouse here from a, uh, a podcast, uh, and, and they're, they're film lovers, and we're going to spend some time today talking about their love of film and maybe their love of particular genre of film as well. Reed, Nathan, good to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Good to see you too, friend. Well, really appreciate you being here and uh, looking forward to spending uh, some time with you today. Uh, you know, Nathan, you and I know each other through the Gardner Web days. Uh, mm -hmm. You are a award-winning actor, and so I'm interested to hear a little bit about that down the road. And if you didn't win awards, you just did. I just yeah, gave you I'm, one. I'm down with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them. <laughs> so you and I have known each other for a little while, and, and Reed, I do appreciate you uh, joining us on this uh, on this journey for Meet Me at the Movies. Certainly. I'd uh, love to hear a little bit about your podcast. I want to get that uh, kind of knocked out and introduced right off the bat. It's called uh, The Fear of God. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Um, well, and yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask you to tell me a little bit about how this got started. And, and, and the, it's, a, it's a very genre specific podcast as well and how that happened as well. Yeah, certainly. It's, it, it's quite a niche, if you will. Uh, so uh, the, the genesis of the show was a few years ago, I think going on about five or six years ago now, I was a co-host, a recurring co-host on the podcast More Than One Lesson, which examined films through the lens of the Christian faith. And I was talking with the primary host, um, who's a good friend of mine, Tyler Smith, and he, uh, I, I told him about an idea that I had about what if we had a podcast that focused exclusively on faith and the horror genre. I'm a big horror fan. And I said, that's a, a, a kind of a niche intersection that's not often tread in. Um, so I think that would be a really good idea. He was very affirming. And I began to call a, a couple of my closest uh, friends to try to field the idea. One of my very first calls was to Nathan. And I, I, as I remember it, I pitched him the idea. By the time we had hung up, we had pretty much decided we're going to do this together. We're, <laughs> we're going to have this conversation uh, every week uh, together. And then the rest, as they say, is history. So, so Nathan, do you yeah. does, do you remember that story exactly the same way? Well, or a to different? bring it back a little bit about uh, a little bit on that, I think what happened was I said, "Oh, you want to do a thing that has an audience? Will you please let me be on it?" You know, like <laughs> I I, uh, I came to the horror genre rather green. I do enjoy genre film, but uh, definitely did not have the encyclopedic knowledge Reed did. Um, and and it it can't go without saying Reed and I've known each other for 20 years and we've done the podcast for three. So, you know, we had a wealth of hi personal history to build off of. And, and, you know, for any listener that's interested or any viewer that's interested, rather I'm in podcast brain. Um, you know, what's really fun about the show is part of it is just this kind of dynamic of our friendship as we engage mm -hmm. with these films. And, and that is almost as crucial to the, the, mix and the recipe as the films themselves and so that's just a lot of fun so yeah. did you guys before you ever did this podcast did you guys talk film just as friends for these past 20 no. years no i'm just kidding yes <laughs> constantly yes we read, read and i will often share uh, reminisce about the bygone days of the video store you may recall what that is no um and and we had this i don't even know read that we would identify it as an active sort of thing it just kind of happened but we would go because because Reed, Reed went to Gardner Webb as well, and we roomed together for a couple years, and we'd go rent stuff at the video store. And half of the time we would do that is just wandering the, the aisles saying like, oh, this one, oh, and, and then banter back and forth. Had we seen it? Had we not? And talk about it. And so, yeah, I mean, we've been discussing film and, and the fun of it for 20 years now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, going the route of the horror film, the horror genre, um, and taking it into this podcast realm, did you have any idea that when you started it, it was going to continue several years later? 
Well, what was funny is that when I first pitched the idea to a couple of people, one of the questions that I got was, is there enough material to sustain that for very long? And, one of those people was I, me. <laughs> and I said, I said, listen, trust me, you have no idea. Like the horror genre is huge. And because so few people, not nobody, but so few people are actually discussing it in the context of faith and philosophy, um, then uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to discuss. And uh, I believe my initial list of possible episodes was more than like 150 films long. Um, I think now three years on, we still have 20 or 30 on that list we have not yet arrived to. So uh, yeah, it, it, I, I had a hope that maybe it would go that long, but uh, here we are three years later and it's uh, a little difficult to believe that it's actually still going. So for people who have never heard this podcast, where can they find it and what can they expect when they're listening to you guys talk? Um, the way they can find it uh, real explicitly, we just launched at the beginning of 2020, the fear of God podcast.com. So that is home base. Um, there's an episode archive there. You can get merchandise there with uh, lovely art from a, a good friend and artist a gentleman named Jacob Hunt. Um, as for the actual episodes, um, you know, we usually have a tent pole film we're discussing as our primary piece of content, but <laughs> the number of bits and ridiculousness that has evolved <laughs> into this show over three years, because again, you've got to think about it like these aren't, we aren't colleagues. Uh, we didn't begin as colleagues and, and right. learn to interact that way. We began as buddies. And so, yeah. so much of the energy and life of the show and, and a given episode is just pulling from 20 years worth of that, that history. And, but specifically a, a given episode is, you know, anywhere from an hour and a half to 215, just depending on how long we run. And, and we'll usually have, as you know, you know, you'll have a little bit up front that's just warm up kind of banter. And then um, we'll, we'll do a segment or two that's kind of developed over time. And then the latter portion of a given episode uh, is not just the film, but towards the, even the end of that is just thematic. We just kind of pull thematic richness or, or not, depending on the film, uh, out right. of it. Um, but we, it's, it's a format that has served us really well. Um, and I, I speak for myself here, and, and maybe you echoed this, Reed, something that I've really grown to love about what we do from even just a faith perspective is when you, when you spend so much time in this type of content, um, you, you start to sort of see, okay, like one, these are just movies, you know, and we're kind of okay with that. Uh, mm -hmm. But two, you start to be able to recognize, I actually posted to our Instagram just the other day, we watched this movie called Trick or Treat, we covered last week. And on, a, on that episode, I said, you know it's crazy when the content we cover is comfort food. <laughs> right like like it's a wild world when that's where we've gotten but yeah. part of what i love about what reed and i do and and it's it's as much the films we assess as it is the friendship that assesses it is being able to just identify things that attempt to make us fearful and that's a really powerful sort of through line for what has what on its surface could just be oh your movie review show you know it's it, there's a lot yeah. more sort of richness to it yeah, I'd like to echo just one brief thing on that is that the the show in its inception, I think, be, began much more academic than it has become and it has become a lot more relational. Um, and a lot of that is rooted in just how long Nathan and I have been friends and uh, what started as an interesting exercise very quickly became there have been conversations we've had that I go back to as they've helped me process my problems in the world. Oh. <laughs> and it's really strange that uh, just sometimes being able uh, with a person you trust as much as I do, Nathan, and, and I feel him to me as well, being able to have that conversation and feel safe and be able to be honest and be able to talk about what scares us and what infuriates us and what is kind of up against us has been really healing more times than not. And we have ex heard some expressions of some longtime listeners that have expressed some variety of that as well. Um, and that's that's really been rewarding in ways I didn't anticipate from the onset. I think that's the beauty of relationships. And, and I think, honestly, the beauty of what film can provide, no matter what genre, is that as we look at the stories, at the themes, at the characters uh, that are being presented to us, it can get us to think about ourselves and to think about those that we love and care about and maybe those that we don't get along with and ask questions why. Um, so I, I love that. I love that. Uh, and I love that you have continued to 
kind of gain from that and appreciate what it is that uh, that you're you're doing. Uh, we are uh, joined here on Meet Me the Movies by Reed Lackey and also Nathan Rouse. Uh, they are the creators and co-hosts for the Fear of God podcast, and you can find that where again? The Fear of God Podcast dot com. <laughs> that was that was pretty tough. I know one of the things that Nathan was afraid of is when I first reached out to him and said, "Hey, I'd love for you guys to possibly be on this show." He said, "Only thirty minutes? I, I don't know if I can do that. I, I do like two hour podcast. I don't know if I can do that." So that was his fear. And you're doing great, by the way, Nathan. You're <laughs> doing you. great. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Well, it takes it takes a lot of work to restrain. <laughs> well, the the first movie I ever saw in uh, in a theater was 1931 Frankenstein, and no, I was not alive at the time. <laughs> it was my mom used to take me to this little theater in Aden, North Carolina, and it was called the Myers Theater, and it was independently owned, and they would show monster matinees every Saturday, and so the first film I ever saw was was a universal horror film. And so they've always been kind of a part of me. I've been drawn to horror films, uh, especially the classics and then the Hammer films. Uh, the Hammer horror films, love those. I don't watch as many horror films now as I used to. And that actually stopped when I had younger kids. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I couldn't watch them necessarily when they were around. And then when I, you know, finally got to watch them late at night, I found myself dreaming a lot more about them than I used to when I was younger. So now I'm picky and more choosy about the horror sure. films that I, that I do watch, but I still like a good one. And um, I, I'd love for you guys both to tell me what type of horror films are you most drawn to? Because uh, Reed, you mentioned it earlier, uh, horror films, uh, it's a genre, but it's a very vast genre. And you've got like a lot of subcategories as well. So oh, Reed, why don't you jump in go, first? Go Reed. Sure, sure. Uh, well, my favorite uh, subgenre is probably I love a good ghost story. So uh, a really well-told, effective ghost story is probably the one I get the most excited about. I love horror comedies specifically, where it can blend something fearful with something light and funny. Um, I also really appreciate, obviously, very spiritually themed horror. My very favorite, not only just horror film, my very favorite film, as I've said so often, is The Exorcist. Um, and so I, I love a lot of those things. But if you really, any subgenre, that gives me a lot of thematic richness to chew on that's going to be what i'm most drawn to and excited about i have my place for the you know just the silly popcorn fun elements as well but uh, that's where i really get excited is when they're they're dealing with a lot of deeper subjects are, are there any that you actually would rather stay away from yes so <laughs> yes um for myself and then i want nathan to answer because i'm always curious to hear that um for me, when it gets too deep into uh, reveling in exploitative violence, I get really bothered by that. So uh, if it's cartoony violence or even violence and gore that's of the nature that is a bit sort of extreme, uh, but in, in a way that's automatically sort of unnatural, then that I can usually be fine with. But there was a subgenre that is uh, t typically called torture porn, yeah. um, and th but then it's all, I prefer the term, the term gornography. But um, yeah. that subgenre is something that I tend to shy away from. I don't respond to it as well because it pivots over to where it's no longer entertaining for me. Now it's just exploitative, and, and I have problems with films like that. Hey, Nathan, what about you? Uh, chime in, if you would, on uh, sure. what you're I, drawn to and then what you're not drawn to. You know, I, I, it would be hard for me to say this particular subgenre I'm drawn to. I kind of... Uh, for three years of doing this, our show kind of tend to defer to read and, and have been pleasantly surprised by some of the suggestions over time. Um, so I just like in a film, horror or not, just really good character stuff, you know, just well-drawn characters, good performance, that type stuff. Um, I do tend to dislike, I do tend to not respond greatly to body horror, um, which is just a really funny running gag on our show we covered the the um, david cronenberg's the fly a couple of years ago and if you're looking for a test case of an episode <laughs> of the fear of god to listen to that's a really good one <laughs> it, is, it is that movie's disgusting um <laughs> but yeah 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 so so okay don't love the body horror um you know typical just kind of character work stuff i tend to respond strongly to gotcha well well for me i've always been drawn to a good story first and foremost and then secondary character and that's really in any genre of film but i read like you I, I like the ghost stories 
Um, but I think for me personally, the first one would be monster films. I love monster sure, films yeah. for whatever reason. I guess that goes back to because uh, the first films I watched were the, the monster films, The Creature from the Black Lagoon or the Dracula, you know. You, you no, have those. you seen, um, we just covered for our show, uh, the film The Host by Bong Joon-ho. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I loved it. That was the first time I'd seen oh, it. What an amazing director. Uh, he's, yeah. he's, he's good at anything he oh, does. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, Absolutely. fantastic film. But the ones I'm actually, I don't get into uh, as much are the demonic films. So Demon uh, Possession. Yeah. You know, I, I remember back as a kid um, when when The Exorcist came out, and that was the big thing. And I was a young kid, and every time I would hear about it, it would just freak me out. I kept thinking, the devil's going to get me. I mean, really, that was right, that was a right. true fear sure, that I had, sure. that, that I'm just this innocent kid, and somehow the devil's going to get inside on me. And so, yeah, I still... I still uh, don't don't go to those. I don't go to that well too often. I don't go to that well too often. Well, um, well awesome. Well, uh, our guest, let's see what time it is. Uh, we're going to take a break. We've got uh, Reed Lackey, Nathan Rouse from the Fear of God podcast. You can find that at thefearofgodpodcast.com. Am I right? Right. Awesome. Yes. We're going to take right. a quick break. We're going to come back and, uh, and talk about um, – if we could hang out with uh, any monsters in films, who would they be? Or any horror characters in films, who would they be? Hang around. We'll be right back after this quick break. They're going to put me in the movies. They're going to make a big star out of me. Why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. Chef Paul Prudhomme once said, you don't need a silver fork to eat good food. Well, on Cleveland County Kitchen, we don't have a silver fork, but we sure do serve up lots of good food. Hi, I'm Deborah Blanton. I hope you'll join me for the next Cleveland County Kitchen. Each month, we offer a complete farm-to-table experience. We visit local growers, we learn about nutrition, and wrap things up with wonderful meals prepared by our guest chefs. It's a lot of fun. I hope you'll join me for the next Cleveland County Kitchen. They're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me. Welcome back to Meet Me at the Movies. I am Noel T. Manning II here on C19 TV and WGWG.org if you're grabbing that podcast. Nathan Rouse and Reed Lackey, our guest right here on Meet Me at the Movies for this week. And we're talking uh, horror films, really spending a lot of time talking about horror films because they have this podcast they've been doing for three years. It's called The Fear of God. And uh, it's not just, it's not, it, it combines spirituality and the horror genre. Is that the, the simplest way to describe it? Yeah. The, yeah a, that's a, um, a little motto we've taken to using that actually does a good job is um, uh, examining what scares us in order to find what saves us. We find it a real concise way to deliver that. But yes, same idea. Yes, awesome. Absolutely. And, and, and when you're doing that, do you find that you are questioning why things scare us? Frequently, frequently. And in a lot of ways, it can be a conversation about certain aspects that we would might admit, well, a, a subject as broad as death. And people can say like, okay, well, I have a fear of dying or I have a fear of death. But this specific window can sometimes help you to unpack specificity around that and to say, okay, well, it's this specific element of it that causes me some anxiety or that I have difficulty getting over this this bridge um so yeah uh it, it's it's really been helpful for me particularly i don't want to speak for nathan but i i think in many ways it has helped me a lot yeah well you can go if you want listen to our coverage on the film phantasm which is a movie i don't really care for but by oh, the end yeah. of our I by the it. end I yeah, it. No, i know everybody else does it's just i'm the, <laughs> I'm the outlier but what's funny is 
I went into that conversation about that film, Real Blase, and by the end of it, I'm weepy because my dog had just passed away, and we started talking about death and all this sort of stuff. I was like, oh my god, you know? Yes. So <laughs> the, things like that happen often. Yeah. Right, and and I don't think I asked this, but the first horror film that you remember watching, uh, either of you want to jump in on that? Reed, I see you smiling. <laughs> so, well, I tell this story often. My very first one that I can remember watching was Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. So that was, I was six years old, which is probably too early, but that <laughs> no, was... There's um, no probably. There's no probably. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my introduction that kicked the door down and paved the way for all the rest of it. Blew my mind at the time. If you put it I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, though okay. it, did ping, it did ping for me earlier. I do have a funny memory of when Pulp Fiction came out, which is not horror on its face. Uh, my father taking me to the theater to see that. Whoa. I was like 12 or 3. Right, right, right. And he even still jokes about the story of me during the film. It was probably during the syringe scene or whatever. Me as a kid being like, hey, I, we can leave if you want to. And he's like, no, 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 we're going to stay. I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing I'm into this. this movie. Yeah, Shut yeah, up, yeah. Just yeah. sit right there. <laughs> Different kind of horror. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so your dad was horrified. That was yeah. the thing. No, no, no. I was. <laughs> he was fine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's dive into the uh, question of the week. We've been doing a lot of these during the uh, quarantine editions of Meet Me at the Movies where we take a specific topic and, and kind of unravel it. And so this one is if you could hang out with any mo monster, any character from a monster film or a horror film, who would it be and why? And so uh, who wants to start? I think Reed has like 12 of them. So we'll let him start first. <laughs> And then we'll My go. Rolodex is so big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so um, then, we'll, then we'll go to Nathan and then I'll You joke, in. but on our website, we have a list of all the films we've covered. I had to go and just scan and be like, hmm, 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 think through. So yes, that, I did use the Rolodex <laughs> approach. All right. So, so um, I was torn about who would get the top spot um, between two characters. I'm going to only list the one who I finally landed on like, no, particularly in these crazy times. I want Ash Williams from the Evil Dead mm. films to come yes. over yes. and yes. hang yes. out at my house. Um, and because I th and the reason I was torn about it is I was like, a lot of chaos follows him, and I don't know that I'm ready for that. But <laughs> in terms of just hanging out with somebody that seems like he would know how to have a good time and know how to have a good laugh uh, and has a little bit of a good heart at the, at the base of it, Ash Williams is my number one. Awesome. Awesome choice. Awesome choice. Yeah, I, he'd be on my list, too. Go for it, Yeah, Nathan. that's a good choice, Reed. I'm proud of you. That's a good one. Hey, right, Nathan. You. Go for it, I'll, Nathan. I'll go with a fun one. I mean, all of mine are just kind of absurd, but I chose the What We Do in the Shadows guys. Oh, they would that, be a blast. That, right? Yeah. They would you be know? a blast. I, I, had to, I had to ponder, though, like, am I then subjecting myself to being turned, or am I the normal person amidst them? I don't know. I didn't come to an answer there, but... I mean, yeah. they sure love that IT guy. They <laughs> sure love that. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. But right, right. I, you know, that just seems like a good old time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well, I'll dive in. I would go with uh, Charlie Brewster from the movie Fright Night. Uh, you know, he's, oh, this, he's this kid. You're that, so that, cool, Brewster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's just somebody that kind of stumbles into – I'm, I'm drawn to characters who kind of stumble into these situations, and they have to find a way out. And, uh, and, and Charlie was one of those that found a way out. And also, you know, I, I, I can relate to him back when I was a teenager as well. So Charlie yeah, Brewster awesome. from Fright Night is on my list. All right, Reed. That's, that's really good. <laughs> um, okay, so this one almost took the top spot because of my affection for the film. But I recognize that the conversations with him, while maybe they would be very enriching and, and like, you know, soul uh, enlightening, might probably be consistently pretty heavy. But I would love to spend some time with Father Marin, the old priest from The Exorcist. Um, again, the conver definitely in contrast, and let me tell you, if I could sign up for having Father Marin and Ash Williams in my house at the same time, I would love to know <laughs> what was about to happen. <laughs> Two very different approaches to dispelling evil, I can tell you that. Um, but, uh, but yes. It's next quite a crossover. <laughs> it is, it is. It would be intimidating. Um, so, but yeah, I would love to have some conversations with Father Marin. Um, I did put... Um... <laughs> I put, uh, you know, I'm, I'm second guessing all of this, but uh, Judd, <laughs> I, I put old uh, Judd Crandall on my list because, you know, uh, that's a, he's, he just seems like a good hang, you know, just sitting on the porch, throwing back some cold ones. But 
Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, then I recall, you know, not just his horrible fate, but he gives some really bad advice at a certain point. And I, I don't know. You he, know. Does. he does. He does. Yeah. He does. But, <laughs> you know, we all get tempted, you know, beyond the, the deadfall, you know. So don't go what across gonna, that what road. Do? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, it's definitely the Fred Gwynn, Judd Crandall, and not the John Lithgow. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I would. Uh, I, I'm, I keep going back to uh, to vampire films, and The Lost Boys was just a seminal film for me in a lot of ways. Loved the music, uh, loved the interaction, but but I loved the Frog Brothers. You know, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, they were just nuts, and uh, they were the only ones that knew something was going on. And if I'm out there in, in the in the mix of all this chaos, I want somebody who knows what's going on, even if nobody else believes them. So that's kind of why I'm drawn to the, uh, the the Corys as well as I like to call them. Yeah, no, that's a that's that's a really really great choice. So the next one on my list is probably somebody that I will come to regret putting on my list if I ever got this choice. But man, say his name three times and you're in for a wild ride. I gotta have I gotta have Beetlejuice over in. Oh, my, I thought you were going for Candyman. Oh no, no, that's five times. That's five times, and that's dreadful. We haven't um, covered no. Candyman yet, so I'm pretty ignorant, you know. <laughs> I thought about Beetlejuice. I did, but I was like, ah. No, man, Beetlejuice is where it's at for me. I think I think that would be a really really fun time, a ridiculous time, but a fun one. It'd be fun for a little while, but at a certain point, you'd be like. <laughs> I regret this choice. <laughs> good but one. While good one. it was fun, it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, good one. Good one. Let's All right, see. Nathan, so what you got? I did. I did put down my my namesake, Frankenstein's monster. I think that we, mm. you know, we're both large. I occasionally feel misunderstood. You know, I like I like the word friend. Uh, so yeah, I think <laughs> I think we. It'd be a real quiet time, I guess, and maybe that's what I'm after, you know. But, but you know, a lot if, of smoking if... and drinking. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, that. So, yeah, Frank, Frankenstein's monster. I'm gonna All go right, for Frank, that. One. Frankenstein's monster. Well, mine. I'm. I'm. I'm really. I'm switching gears from my first two. Okay. Um, Hannibal Lecter is someone I would. I would like to have the glass between us. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But you stay just, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just the brilliance of who he is, I, I would be fascinated just to spend some time talking to him. Um, mm, I would mm. not tell him anything about me, but of course he would know. I was every, say, you're, he would you're know done. it anyway. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Meet yeah. me in the movies is over. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just there's just Meet something. Me for dinner. And, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> but, but, movie. But but Anthony Hopkins was amazing, and that character oh, was just fascinating. And so, or anything else, just fascinated by the character. Well, we are uh, actually out of time, man. I could keep doing this uh, forever. This is great, guys. Uh, Reed Lackey and Nathan Rouse uh, joining us here on Meet Me at the Movies. Uh, the Fear of God is the podcast, and you can find that where? Can you find that, Nathan? You can find that at thefearofgodpodcast.com. All right, three years uh, and going, and uh, just really appreciate you guys spending time with us. That's my alarm saying to stop, stop, stop. <laughs> and uh, for all of those tuning in, spending time with us, thank you so much. And uh, we always leave you with a movie quote of the week. You can, uh, before I do that, you can email us info at c19.tv. Uh, and again, the podcast is at wgwg.org. And you can stream this uh, at c19.tv. So the uh, movie quote of the week comes from Frankenstein 1931. And this is Henry Frankenstein. Have you ever wanted to do anything that was dangerous? And uh, I think that Nathan did that by surviving the show. So we're glad. <laughs> Nathan, Reed, thank you both for uh, being here with thank us today you, for Meet Me at the Movie. And for all of those tuning in, thank you so much. And until next time, that's a wrap.